Welcome to LiDAR Lab. I'm Lewis Graham, Chief Technical Officer for QCoherent Software and GeoQ Software, the parent company of QCoherent. In this session, we're going to compare the features of LP360 Basic Edition to the new features for LAS data in ARC 10.1. I think throughout this video, you'll see that while these new capabilities in ArcGIS are quite interesting, the performance and the features aren't quite up to the level that are going to be necessary for dealing with real-world LiDAR data sets. Now that said, I want to ensure that uh, you recognize that we're good friends with Esri. We're a silver level partner in both of our companies. And our goal in the long term with ArcGIS is to make sure that the features that are in LP360 augment those in, in uh, ArcGIS. Our purpose here is not really to compete but to add value. Now to install LiDAR data into ARC 10.1, you're going to need one of the 3D extensions. So if I look at Customize Extensions, you can see that I'm running 3D Analyst. Uh, you can also run Spatial Analyst. Uh, this extension is needed to build what uh, Esri calls a LAS data set. And recall that LAS is the most common format of LiDAR data. You also notice that we have LP360 loaded as well. So those are the extensions we have loaded. So let's look at bringing LiDAR data into ArcGIS. So we'll go to the Tools, Geoprocessing Tools button. We'll bring up Data Management Tools. And under Data Management Tools, you'll see a new tool called LAS Dataset. I'll expand that. And we see Create LAS Dataset. This is the capability within ArcGIS that requires 3D Analyst or Spatial Analyst. I'm going to browse to some LiDAR files. These are strips of LiDAR data. It represents about 20 million LiDAR points, so this is a very small data set just being used for this demonstration. So ARC is out registering these files. Now a little bit different than the philosophy of LP360 is ARC uh, really is a post-LiDAR tool, so it assumes that you've already done all of the brake line work that you would on this LiDAR data, and it can now apply those brake lines. So if I wanted to, I could add brake lines at this point. I'm not going to do that. I'll just OK this. And like all of the geoprocessing tools, you see some status in the lower right-hand corner of the, of the uh, window giving you the status of this. And now we see this LiDAR data coming in. Now while that data is loading, uh, let me tell you a bit about the platform that we're on. So I'm running this on a laptop, but it's quite a high-end laptop. I've got an i7 processor running at 2.4 gigahertz. It's an 8-core processor and 8 gig of memory, and I've got an NVIDIA graphics subsystem. So this is quite a capable machine, uh, equivalent to a desktop workstation. So here I've loaded the LiDAR data into ArcGIS, and I'm visualizing this by elevation. Let me now load this exact same data set using LP360. So I click on the LP360 Add LiDAR Data Layer. I'll browse to this exact same set of files. I'm going to open these as read only. And they're loaded into another layer in the system. Now the first thing you'll notice with this um, rather small data set is the visualization speed. So first let's look at LP360 which is this um, top layer. And I'm going to turn off the display of these strips. And you notice that I can zoom in and out. I get instant response from the LP360 layer. I'll turn that off. And now I'm turning on the ARC 10.1 capability. And the first thing you notice that if, is that if I'm zoomed out a bit, it won't display at all. Uh, and that's a size limitation in ARC. I've zoomed in a bit and now you see ARC painting this display. So you can see straight away that if you were doing a large data set where you needed to do uh, quite a bit of moving around in the data to do some quality check or just some simple visualization that the performance just isn't quite there yet. You don't want to spend all of your time waiting on these display updates. So the first thing we see is we have a bit of a display update performance problem and um, if I load a larger data set, then this problem is naturally uh, exacerbated. Again, this is about 20 million data points, which is uh, uh, quite a small data set. So let's stay with this, and let's look at the tools that we have available within 10.1 ArcGIS. You'll see that I have a LAS dataset toolbar, a few options 
on the um, left hand side the data set that's loaded in a drop down menu and the visualization modes that I have elevation which I'm showing now I can switch to class so now I'm displaying this uh, file colored by classification where the brown color is ground, green is vegetation, and so forth. Or I can look at it by um, return. This particular data set has only one return in the last data set, and so I see a single color. I'll switch back to elevation. And then I can also visualize by a few of the uh, triangulated irregular network tools. So we'll look at elevation, uh, 10 of the uh, elevation. And you see I'm getting a weight cursor, and now I start building up a 10. And again, you see that the, the fundamental problem that we would have with ArcGIS at 10.1 with LAS data sets would be just simply the performance. One could not really do practical QC with this type of performance. Now to compare this to LP360, we'll keep this in step. Let me switch over to LP360. I'll click on this LP360 layer as soon as our current update is complete. I'll switch off the arc display and now I'm using the uh, LAS toolbar for uh, LP360 and we'll switch this to a display of 10 and you see that we get an instant 10. I can zoom in, zoom out. I get instant display updates. And so this, of course, is quite usable and it's a performance that uh, our users of LP360 are quite used to. So we get performance that will support the display. Um, another interesting um, thing that has not yet been included in 10.1 is to be able to modulate the display by intensity. I think that's critical to QC or even visualization. I'll stay in LP360. I'll click the Apply Intensity Shading. And now you see and let me zoom in a bit so this becomes even more apparent that I am modulating by intensity and I can now pick up road features and things like that that really don't show up in simply an elevation or a classification model. This is really critical to visualizing the data. I can also switch to a pure intensity view as I've done here and I really have what looks like a black and white image. I'll switch back to a points display. And so you see this really looks like a panchromatic image. This is critical to QC. If I switch back over to ArcGIS 10.1, this is a display capability that just simply is not available in Arc at the 10.1 level. It may be added later, but it's currently not available. I have no options for that. And if I drill down into the layer options, uh, I won't find it at that level either. So this is a limitation that um, is really quite inhibiting for doing QC of LiDAR data. The next four controls that I have are, let's, let's not skip over the filters. So filters allows me to just filter by specified classes of LiDAR data when I'm visualizing by class. So we'll switch our LiDAR data back to class. And we can filter by, let's say, ground only. And here we get a view of the ground class. And again, this works fine. Um, if you want to set up other tools with an ArcGIS, you can see the classes now displayed. You can go down to the layer properties and put together different class combinations. And of course, we have these same sorts of filters in uh, LP360. Uh, next, let's look at the profile view. We've got four navigation tools. I don't find them very useful. They just let you pan around different areas of the display, but you can do that by dragging the display as well. Um, the next tool is the profile tool. So I'll click on that. And now this is asking me to draw the line where I would like the profile. So I click a point, I drag across my data, click a second point, and now I drag the width. You see a problem here as well with performance. As soon as I drag any substantial size of width, I've run out of grow room and I can only draw a small profile. If I escape out of that and draw a much narrower profile, then you see I can get a greater width, but even that is not too uh, extensive. If I draw the profile, then ARC, and I click on the third button for width, ARC will paint the profile in this lower view. Now I cannot pan this profile around, and that means that if I want to look at a profile of a different area of the data, I have to go up into the map view and go draw it again again watching my width. If I want to change what's displayed, so I switch my filter from ground to all, 
and you see the map view has changed to all. If I want to see all in the view in the profile, I have to do an update profile refresh. So again, the uh, pretty uh, loose coupling between the profile view and the map view. If I compare that to LP360, so I'll turn off ARC and turn on LP360, and we'll switch LP360 back to a view by classification. So we'll view um, by class and I drag a profile view in the LP360 window. First of all, you see I have no limitation on width. I can make it any size I want. The view is directly synchronized with the map view and I have immediate dynamic movement. I can just scroll my mouse wheel and, and cruise through this data. And this type of interface is critical for visualization. And again, this is a type interface not yet available in ARC 10.1. Now finally, let's look at the 3D capabilities of the two products. First of all, we'll look at LP360, and you'll see why we've chosen to start with it in just a moment. So I'm showing the data in the LP360 legend, and on the viewing toolbar, I can select Define the 3D Windows Extent tool from LP360, and I just drag a box where I'd like to see a 3D window. It pops right up, and I can select whatever viewing mode I would like directly in the 3D window. I can look at this in points, 10, by classification, etc. And you see that I get immediate response in my 3D window, even if I'm in a difficult view, such as a triangulated irregular network. I can dismiss this view. If I'd like to see the entire project, I'll just drag a very large window. And here you see that we've got the entire project in 3D, quite easily manipulated, extremely high performance. If I want, if I have a dual screen monitor set up, which is typical for this type of work, I can move this 3D window to my second display monitor and make it full screen and have quite a nice display. So again, you know, very high performance, uh, completely controllable, select whatever areas I would like. Now let me switch over to ArcGIS. I'll turn off the layer for LP360 and turn on the ArcGIS window. And once this is updated, what we need to do in ArcGIS is actually zoom this map view to the size window that we would like to see the 3D view because I can't really draw the 3D area. It's just going to take whatever's in the map view and put that into a 3D window. So here I've zoomed in a bit on the ArcGIS window. Again, a fairly small amount of data now being represented in the map view. And I'll click on the last icon available in the tool set of Arc 10.1 3D view. This pops up a 3D window and it attempts to load the 3D map view into this 3D window. And this is where you really don't have sufficient performance to, to work with the product. So you can see the length of time it's taking this window to, to update. And in fact, uh, we quite often think that the window simply isn't working at all because on a large data set, it could go for 20 or 30 minutes trying to load the data. So you've seen a comparison of LP360 to ArcGIS 10.1. I think it's quite obvious that uh, we really have sort of a taste of LiDAR in Arc 10.1, really nothing uh, capable for viewing yet. Uh, that may change in the future. But for now, uh, you can see that you definitely need LP360 to do any kind of reasonable work with LiDAR data in the ArcGIS environment. Thank you very much for watching this session of LiDAR Lab.